ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we are going to talk about a topic that I think is long overdue, and man, I'm just glad we're finally here to talk about it, and that is the return of team play to World of Warships. In 12.2, Wargaming made a somewhat unsung and unheralded change in the patch notes. I'll put it up on the screen here. And I'll put the link down below if you want to go read it further for yourself. If you want to spend some time digesting it. But the short version is this. Spotting damage is now rewarded at a higher rate for some classes than it has historically been in the past. In other words, all classes are now rewarded equally for spotting damage. This has been a real sore point for me for years as a destroyer player, right? Especially at high tier. If I'm doing my job, I'm out in the front of the fleet, I'm screening for torpedoes, I'm spotting things for the bigger ships behind me to shoot at. They're getting damage, they're getting experience. I'm getting spotting damage, which up until this patch has always has never rewarded the way that I felt it should have. Because the destroyer player is taking a lot of risk. He's closer to the enemy, his ship is more fragile. Um, in a world where radar and sonar are very, very popular, it is not that hard to detect a destroyer sometimes, depending on the, the status of the map. And so, Wargaming finally, after many years of, well, I won't say many years of complaining, but I, this has been a sore point for me for a long time. I've said for literally years, destroyers have not been properly rewarded for spotting damage. Now, it feels like maybe the tide has shifted. And as my evidence for this, this assertion, I present to you, this game in Tier 10 America Destroyer USS Gearing here on Northern Waters. Now we're starting off fairly slow. We, I'd spawned over on the right with a Shimakaze, and I thought, well, the Tromp in the middle is probably going to need a little bit of help. He doesn't have great detection. The Shima's pretty low detection. He's got this covered. But then, like, the battleship situation is just all messed up. These guys are just redeploying all over the place, and yeah. So now... Having seen, I know I'm I know I'm driving into a Petro radar, okay, but I also know he can't shoot me from his position right now. He has to move up a little further. Those two tor those two single launch torpedoes, the big angry smoke cloud and the SAP shells you see there on the left hand side of the screen, also tell me that the opposing force, Sherman, is here in the cap to greet me. So if at the moment, I'd, I'd three minutes in, it feels like I've kind of come a long way for very little gain. I'm not going to be able to take this cap against a Forrest Sherman. He outguns me. He has more health. He has five kilometer hydro. He has American smoke. It's just not happening. It's not happening. Not without support. And if you look at the minimap, you can see that most of the ships that spawned mid have all screwed off to a different part of the map, which feels kind of bad. So I'm not hanging out here. I came all this way to maybe help the Tromp, but in the end, this board position is not good for me. Now, if you look at the minimap, you can also tell that at least one, if not two destroyers, there they are, two opposing destroyers are in the sea cap versus my friendly Shimakaze, who is already getting beat up over there. He's already down to about half HP. Uh, or no, he's not. He's, he's going to get beat down to about half HP here over the course of the next few seconds as he begs for help from his teammates. I'm going to go back over and try to help that guy. He's been doing a good He's been doing good work over there, and I haven't been able to help him all that much. I've already got about 25,000 spotting damage. You can see it there in the top right. It's that little number with the uh, the little kind of uh, crosshair next to it that tells you how much spotting damage you've accrued. I have no actual damage up to this point, obviously. I haven't even fired my guns. Now, I am running legendary gearing. I'll put the build up on the screen here very briefly. This is my USS gearing build that I play, which means that I have the same detection as a Shimikaze, about 5.6 kilometers, in exchange for a slightly longer gun and torpedo Reload. The build that I use negates the gun reload, and, um, well, I have to eat the torpedo reload uh, penalty, let's say, but it works out because I'm running torpedo mod, uh, torpedo mod 2 in slot 6, and I'm also running Feed the Fish on my captain, so in the end, I do get a nice buff to my torpedo skill, but uh, torpedo reload, but it's, uh, it, is, it is a little slower than it otherwise would be because of that upgrade. My efforts to help the Shimikaze are unfortunately going to go for naught the friend, the the, uh, the Holland here is going to push up, and 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 I'm sorry, that's the Yu Yang. Yu Yang's going to push up and, and uh, kill him. The Slava does get a really good salvo into him there. I get a few shots into him, and uh, he decides he needs to try and preserve his health. It's the right move, honestly, but 
I also know he's kind of caught out right there, right? He's going to either spend some time maneuvering in smoke to get flipped around, in which case my torpedo salvo might catch him, or he's going to bail off to the south or possibly back to the west, and we'll see how that goes. But his buddy, the Holland, is now actually inside my detection range, pitch picking me up on the surface. Ah, we went fishing, came up lucky, got a Yahtzee there. Now, the Holland is not a ship that I'm excited about getting into a gunfight with. He has a heel, he has just as many barrels and a better rate of fire, even if his shells are a little smaller. I am going to go ahead and smoke. I don't want to take this engagement just yet. I just do not have the support here enough to make me feel comfortable in winning that engagement. The Slava contributed to helping me kill the Yu Yang. That was very welcome, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to take that engagement. It's too early, right? You've heard me, if you've seen some of my American Destroyer videos, you've seen how I talk about protecting your health early. To me, this is just another example of the same. Now, I'm starting to get a little frustrated with my team as they all are, they literally are all of them kind of screwing off into the bottom left corner of the map, ceding total control of the board of the enemy team. From our perspective, this is terrible. Here's the good news. The enemy team doesn't seem to know when to stop pushing W. In the end, what, what should be a huge, disastrous uh, relinquishment of board control for us is actually not going to be as catastrophic as well as it probably should have been. Now, at the moment on this side of the map, the Holland is still close by. You saw me catching a glimpse of him there. The spotting advantage of legendary gearing is, or unique upgrade gearing is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot recommend this upgrade enough. Um, he doesn't want to get spotted. He backs off a bit. Kerfer is coming down the 10 line. I send him some love because I have 16 and a half kilometer torpedoes on a 93 second reload. Why not, right? They'll be back in a minute anyway, or a minute and a half, I should say. So let's give it a shot. Only what the one kill, 20k damage, 30,000 spotting damage at this point. A fairly pedestrian game, if I'm honest. Now my smoke is still up. I've kind of rotated back into it. Still got 30, 40 more seconds left. And it's like, well, I mean, let's make sure we get this repub off the board. Let's not leave anything to chance. Never trust your teammates to do what you can do yourself. That's good advice. So we do manage to pick up uh, kill number two there with just a few shells out of the main battery from the, the comfort of smoke. Now, my expectation, based on that Kerr first last course, is that one or two of those torpedoes is probably going to land. Unfortunately, either the Holland is screening for him or he had his hydro up, which is possible, and uh, sad face, none of them land. He turns in, and uh, I don't get anything out of that salvo. I am going to kind of peel off back to the south. I want to get eyes on this Kerr first. I want to know where he is. I want the Slava to know where he is. There we go. Now we've got him lit on the surface again. And uh, I'm not positive where the Holland is at the moment. So my thought process is, let's rotate back to the west. The curve first is going to push this way. I'm going to get off to his port flank and try to torpedo him as he moves east. It puts me in an awkward position, but if I can get him off the... Hello. If I can get him off the board, life is a little better. This Holland out, out here screening for him, I guess looking for me trying to pick a gunfight. I'm not sure. I'm going to kite him for a bit. Turns out this is a really good angle for gearing to get all of her guns to action. And this Holland is really struggling either against the little bit of extra armor I have in my midside and his low caliber HE, or just, I'm not sure what exactly, but my three second reload, his heal, everything can't quite keep up, and we're going to bag that kill as well. Now luckily, I'm just outside my gun bloom from the Kerr first, I don't have to smoke here to break detection, and so now I can get back to my original plan of moving back to the, uh, to the west and harassing this Kerr first. We're nine minutes in. Team has a fairly significant lead in ships. You can see there we've killed seven of the enemy um, to only three losses of our own, even though we're upside down on points and still, still own no caps. I lead these torpedoes out here, assuming the Kerr first was going to hold this kind of northwesterly course uh, or something close to it. He actually takes a sharper turn to the north than I was anticipating. But the nice thing about gearing 16 and a half kilometer torpedoes is that they're very similar to Shimakazes in that you can um, potentially actually do a uh, land torpedoes in what I call a stern chase, right? When you're chasing a ship from a stern and a destroyer, generally your torpedoes do not have the range to effectively catch up to a battleship who's running straight away from you. 
There are a handful of exceptions. Gearings, 16-kilometer torpedoes is one. The Shimakaze 20 kilometers are another. Sometimes even the Japanese 12-kilometer torpedoes, in the right circumstance, you know, if you're close enough, might because they're fast, they might be enough to catch an opposing battleship. But certainly these torpedoes here can make it work. Quick status check, about 37,000 damage there, only 50,000 spotting damage, still no caps. I've been trying to pick up a cap all game. My team now, finally 10 minutes in, has managed to grab the A cap way over on the other flank, but um, nothing doing. There's only three surviving enemy ships left here as we've crossed over the halfway mark of the game. The Kerfurst in front of me, the uh, the Forest Sherman somewhere in the center, and then, I'm sorry, the Forest Sherman is gone, my apologies. The Balao, way over somewhere on the other flank, and the Montana who's messing around, whatever he's doing, somewhere north of the B-cap. I'm trying to predict this Kerfurst movement. My expectation is he's going to move either due north or angle back to the east slightly, take maybe like a north-northeasterly course. So I'm laying these torpedoes out and the possibility that I might catch him with one. But if you watch over the next, say, minute or so, you're going to see my spawning damage continue to tick up, over 70,000 now, and it's going to keep going because I'm doing a, a good job of spotting for my team. The Napoli in the mid is getting shells downrange on the curve first. The Goliath off to my, uh, my port side there, you see him down on the sixth line, about H6 or so. He's getting shells on this curve first. So I'm able, I'm able to contribute to the team by keeping this Kerfurst lit, and I'm finally, finally, after all of these years, being rewarded for it. It's kind of nice. It's a nice change of pace. My existence here, my very presence, is pushing this Kerfurst out of the cap. Now, honestly, he could have continued pushing me. Right? He's a hydro battleship. That's something that no destroyer wants to have pushing in his face. But I do have enough backup here in the form of these two heavy cruisers. He seems disinclined, and I'm okay with that. That salvo of torpedoes, of course, nothing doing. They were mostly speculative anyway, meant to keep him going this direction. If he wanted to turn back to the east, then he would have taken probably one or two. Uh, he's now actually going to angle off to the north. I'm sorry, north, north. Uh, want to turn back to the west. If he wanted to turn, he's actually turning back to the north-northeast now. As I'm finally to the cap, he knows I'm here. I mean, he can see me capping, and I'm having to make sure that I'm staying behind him uh, far enough away that I don't get detected on the surface, because his secondaries are something I don't want to deal with. Now, as he turn back, turns back to the west, I'm faced with a bit of a dilemma here, because the opposing Montana, you see him last spotted up on the sea line. He's also entering the my realm of uh, realm of engagement as well. So I'm going to do something I almost never do in World of Warships. I'm going to fire widespread torpedoes, luck chuck style, just to see what I can get. So we're going to widen up the, widen up the salvo here. I'm going to fire one, kind of angling out a little bit for the Montana. And then we're going to pull a little bit of a tactical knotzer here as we beach ourselves on this island and get reoriented. Now one of the tricks, you see they're up over 100,000 spotting damage by now, by the way. There's my first cap. And... Um, one of the tricks with um, uh, widespread torpedoes like this, right, is that it's, it's sometimes as difficult to get them to stagger quite the way you want to kind of fill in some of the gaps. I wasn't able to do that. You can actually see I've got a couple of places where I would prefer there to not be such large gaps in the salvo, but it is what it is, and I've got a couple of torpedoes stacked on top of each other in a few spots. 106,000 spotting damage and continuing to climb here. Going to get flipped around. I'm going to continue. My, you know, my, my torpedoes are 30 seconds away from a reload. I'm going to get two into the curve first here. I just barely missed that one out of the stern. And I'm even going to get one into the Montana there. So nice salvo, right? Ten out, three hits. I won't complain about that. At a minimum, I cause those guys to burn their DCPs. I don't get any flood damage here. So everybody just damage controlled. That means for the Napoli and the Goliath, they can land some good sticky fires. Napoli takes care of the GK. And now it's just the Montana and the Balao. The Balao's way over on the two line. You can see my team's trying to run him down. He's inside Schlieffen's secondary range. I cannot imagine he's going to be with us much longer. So that'll just uh, that'll wrap things up here. We have just this Montana left as we're continuing to get spotting damage. The Napoli off to my port side for the moment has uh, popped his crawling smoke and isn't visible for this Montana. I'm actually spotting for the Napoli. You see there my spotting damage continuing to tick up. I'm actually just in front of this smoke, this Napoli smoke right now. You can barely see the smoke bubbles kind of coming up behind me as we pick up the Combat Scout achievement. I'm a huge fan of this one, by the way. They added this achievement about, I don't know, I think about six or eight months ago. And um, 
It's now a nice little acknowledgement and reward for doing a destroyer's job of getting out here, spotting the enemy, and then contributing to damage, because you have to do some damage to get a combat scout badge. With the game winding down, I'm going to go ahead and chip in, chip in a little bit of damage here. Whatever I can get out of my guns, we'll get a fire there, that'll be nice. Team's basically just kind of robocopping this guy, as my good buddy Lord Zath would say. This game sort of ended up as a steamroll, but man, for a long time it didn't feel like it. My team, my battleships played so passively, it really, really felt like we were gonna we were gonna lose because they would not fight over capture zones. I'm gonna swap to the AP here for a few more salvos. I've got such a beautiful broadside target. Surely I can get some full pins on this guy, either through his superstructure or maybe maybe even the casemate as we plunge them down. I don't know, we'll see. But we are gonna manage to bag the kill right there. A nice little way to wrap up the game on four kills. But here's what I really want you to notice as we look at the game results screens. For starters, the, this, this top battle screen is pretty solid. Like, that's a nice cash result. I am running the blue, the blue economic cash bonus, so if you've only got greens, you're not willing to spend them, you might not make quite so much money, but that's a really nice cash reward, right, for a, um, for a ship like this. For a, ship, for a game that only did 110,000 damage, which is respectable in a destroyer, don't get me wrong, but that's not breaking any world records here, okay? 1.6 million uh, uh, credits and then 110,000 damage, a nice solid little gearing game, four kills, plus my combat scout achievement, which I'm honestly proudest of, of almost everything, right? But have a look at that base XP. 40, almost 4,500 base XP. Now, I only had one cap, right? I managed to, to steal this, let's, let's be honest, I stole the Republic kill, right? I did like a thousand damage to that guy and got a kill badge. Um, I outdueled the Holland. That one felt good. Um, I was able to kind of sneak in at the end and pick up the kill on the Montana. I didn't do catastrophic damage to that guy. Um, and then um, I had another kill somewhere along the way in um, um, the, uh, the Yu Yang, right, with the torpedoes. So again, it, you know, four kills, not a whole lot of damage. What is all this? Where is all this? Where is all this coming from? And I think the answer lies in the next screen as we look at the spotting damage. 150,000 spotting damage now seems to actually be a meaningful number, doesn't it? Right? For years, like I've had, I've had a game, I think I have an Asashio game I keep meaning to bring to the channel, and maybe I'll get it off my butt and get it done recently, uh, uh, next week or this, this week or later this week or whatever, just to show you guys the difference. Because that Asashio game, I think, is almost two years old, and I had more spotting damage than this. I think I had more damage than this, and I got less XP and less cash. I think, I think that's a really telling result now. And I think it's a real big um, feather in the cap of the American destroyer line. My buddy Seven, a fellow uh, North American community contributor, a fellow streamer, he and I were chatting about this on Discord. And I think his words were something along the lines of, this sort of a change makes gearing, and he, we were talking about gearing, and I was talking about this game. He said it makes gearing, and I'm like, well, it really makes the American destroyer line in general, certainly the high end, among the best team play destroyers in all of World of Warships. Because they're now jack of all trades a little bit, they're rewarded for spotting damage, and legendary gearing is the least detectable of them all, right? With that 5.6 kilometer detection on the unique upgrade. That is really nice, guys. That is really nice. It feels like it's taken too long. We're seven and a half years into this game, and it feels like maybe, just maybe, we finally hit a stride where spotting damage and intelligent, smart, destroyer spotting gameplay is finally going to be rewarded properly with experience and credits in World of Warships. Let's hope so. I'll keep out on the lookout for more games like this to see if I can back up my theory. In the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.